Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today I'm going to answer just a quick video question here. Right, I like to type things out usually, and I don't like to make videos, but I'm going to make a video response here. Uh, Timothy asked, you know, basically inviting the thoughts of Dimitri Bianco on this article. Um, but it's called Venture Capital CEO Dumbfounds CNBC Anchor by saying billionaires and hedge funds don't deserve a bailout. Uh, let them get wiped out. All right, so my first knee-jerk reaction, just like reading the title, is going to be, okay, I'm not really for bailouts. And that's a whole other economic, I guess, discussion within itself. Uh, there are other solutions to essentially support financial systems without doing bailouts, at least not governmental bailouts. But then I read the article and I was like taken back on so much of this is incorrect and wrong. And then I watched the video and the article matched the video. So I'm like, this is just really messed up article. And I'm going to talk about why this is incorrect. Um, so... Shamath is the guy that's being interviewed or is discussing on here and making these statements. Um, nothing against him. I'm sure he's a bright individual. Um, anyways, nothing against him personally. But let's just go through a lot of the article here and a lot of the issues. And I think essentially just ignorance to how corporations actually function. So let's start with the first statement here, which is, you know, he says, when a company fails, it does not fire its employees. Okay, so I think most of this article comes to this very high level... I don't know, business view where you don't quite understand what it means when a business fails. Um, so when a business fails, let's go through this quickly. Uh, so it depends what it's filing. So it could be filing chapter seven, which is for liquidation. It could be filing chapter 11, which is reorganization. Um, I think he assumes and thinks investment banks are gonna step in on all these companies that are failing and airlines are specifically mentioned. So I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt and make the assumption he only thinks we're talking about airlines but realistically, the questions are businesses in general. Uh, when a company files Chapter 7 and liquidates, uh, everybody is fired, assets are sold, investors are paid what's left over. Uh, so let's just look at small businesses here because I think this is also part of my grind with this article or discussion. Okay, so it says here that if you look at small business association, so SBA.gov, um, let's look at facts. It says that 99.7% of U.S. employing firms, employers here, uh, are small businesses, okay? That's not really comparable apples to apples, right? Because a big corporation, which is one corporation, might have 10, 20, 30,000 employees, and yet a small corporation might only have one. So take lots of these. But if you dig a little deeper here on the data, 49.2% uh, of private sector employment, so 49.2% of jobs are by small businesses, okay? So when a small business files bankruptcy, a lot of times what ends up actually happening is that if you look at accounting here, so assets equals liability plus shareholders equity, right? So basic accounting here on the balance sheet. A lot of times that equity here is negative. So when they go bankrupt, there's nothing left. So the investors, the CEOs, all these small individuals that are running small businesses, so almost half the US economy here, right? If they go bankrupt and they lose it, they're not gonna get anything back. A lot of them aren't. Um, let's just say they're very fiscally responsible, and let's say the shareholder equity is, I don't know, 50% of what was put in. Again, all these investors in these small businesses a lot of times are going to be regional or local banks who, again, hold funds from local individuals. And again, a lot of these individuals who run small businesses are actually funding them themselves. So let's keep that in mind here that small businesses and half of this is going to be individuals and small businesses. It's not going to be these big, massive corporations. And then he starts diving into here, uh, you know, Packaged bankruptcies, pensions and employees end up owning more of the corporation, you know, assuming chapter 11. I, he's assuming like an airline's going to go bankrupt, it's going to get bought up, it's going to get restructured, and all the employees are going to own all these shares. But when a company fails, those shares are worth nothing, right? Or they're worth a fraction and it gets sold. So he's again, he, I think he's assuming it's going to get sold. So let's say, I don't know, airlines ABC gets liquidated and then he thinks it's gonna get sold off to like, I don't know, the big ones like Delta and American or something, and someone else is gonna buy it all up. And then all those employees are gonna magically get their pensions or 401k or something, but they're gonna own more of this company. Again, owning more of something that's worth less is not a win, that's a loss. So I'm not sure why he's making that statement. Um, and he says, people that get wiped out are speculators who own the unsecured tranches of debt uh, or the folks that own the entity. This is where my entire grind comes with the article here. Who, who do you think owns these corporations? Okay, we're gonna get into that in a second because he continues to go on here. Um, you know, these are sophisticated investors who deserve to get wiped out. 
So again, what I'm taking away from his entire speech here is he's, I'm guessing, a millionaire here who's complaining about other millionaires because it's socially pop popular to do this. Again, pointing the finger at the rich guy and saying, oh, it's all his fault. Let's wipe him out. I'm not sure how, I'm not sure how that's going to happen because everybody's in this together, right? It's a corporation that goes under, not an individual. Um, but let's dig in a little deeper here. Um, he says, employees don't get wiped out. The pensions don't typically get wiped out. Who cares about the hedge funds? Stocks aren't owned by employees. Look at these companies. You know, they're owned by BlackRock and these huge organizations. Uh, and employees only own a few hundred to thousands of dollars worth of shares. Uh, and then he finishes off by saying on Main Street, people are getting wiped out, but not CEOs, boards, hedge funds, individual and people are getting wiped out. Uh, they can't make the expenses that they need to pay for their monthly bills. So he's trying to show some, like, I guess, care or concern for the individual. And then only individuals take losses, not the executives. Okay, so let's look at a corporation. Who, where do you think all the money comes from from BlackRock? Do you think it's a bunch of billionaires who get together and CEOs and they're like out to get the world and they have this conglomerate group that's like, I don't know, owning BlackRock? All these big organizations, these institutional investors you keep talking about are owned by other corporations and are owned by like 401ks. So all those individuals working at all these companies are taking their savings and saving for retirement and putting them into 401ks and you're saying, who cares about the 401ks? They're ran by BlackRock. They're ran by these hedge funds. Let's just bankrupt everybody out of here. Like, I don't think you quite understand how corporations and businesses work, right? Again, yes, billionaires and millionaires, they're going to own larger portions of corporations because they have more money. So that money is going to be invested. But for the average Joe, when these companies liquidate or fail or go bankrupt, and I'm not saying we should be bailing companies out. But at the same time, you got to realize like when an airlines goes out, a lot of those employees are going to end up unemployed. A lot of those employees are going to lose those shares or take a loss on those shares that they own. And then you ignore the fact that a lot of other 401ks and all these other investment instruments that we have all actually invest in other corporations. So again, when it goes under, it's not just these rich billionaires and CEOs and hedge funds that you think are running the industry. Uh, what ends up happening is a lot of times... You know, those employees that are over like at PepsiCo, right? Frito-Lay, uh, the ones at the, the banks, like the people that are tellers, the people that are in manufacturing, all these people end up assigning wealth or money to companies like BlackRock or other corporations to actually manage their 401k accounts. All of these people are going to be taking losses on this. This isn't like you can somehow let companies fail and only the executive is going to lose. It's an all or nothing thing, right? And corporations like an organism, it's a, it's a group. Right, you can't run an organization without a CEO and a CFO and a you know chief risk officer and like a chief HR officer. But you also cannot run a corporation without the people in the finance department and the people in the HR department and the people in accounting and those that are actually doing like the manufacturing and the laboring and the sales and the marketing. Right, corporations are entire organization or organisms essentially organizations here. Right, uh, every piece and component is needed. When these go under, everybody loses to some extent. And trying to say on the bailout side. So again, I'm not in favor of the bailouts necessarily, but to say that like we should let them fail and bail out because only the people in these rich hedge funds and these rich organizations and CEOs are going to lose money is delusional at best. And even if you start making all the assumptions of, okay, it gets bought out and it gets merged with somebody else. And now let's say the employees own more of the corporation and only the hedge funds lose. At the end of the day, though, those shares aren't going to be worth very much because the business as an organization, as a unit is not profitable. That's why it's going under. So no one's going to say, you know, I don't know, let's say company ABC again is selling at $100 a share. When people find out it has financial troubles, no one's going to step up and say, let's pay $100 a share. They're going to come in and do essentially a debt offering and say, I'll pay you 50 bucks a share or $30 a share. So you just lost half or 70% here. So even if you own more as an individual, you're not going to come out at the end, right? So I think it's very ignorant in this article, these comments, a lack of understanding how accounting and balance sheets work. Again, Everybody loses in the economy as the pandemic specifically here is going on. Uh, we see everybody is losing. Everybody's in this together. It's very, very ignorant. And I think very irresponsible to be pointing the finger at individuals just because you don't like their financial status. You don't like that they have more money. So in general, one of my thoughts on this article, I think it's a joke. I don't think you should take it with like any seriousness. Uh, you should just look into accounting and finance, understand how businesses operated and functions. Yes, the CEOs are going to take big losses, but the employees are going to take big losses too. 
And again, is it really fair to essentially try to wipe them out because you have a personal vendetta against executive CEOs and hedge funds, which seems to be the driving force of why you don't really care about bailouts? Right? But you have to realize all those people on the bottom, all those hardworking individuals, for example, like at airlines that are actually doing like the baggage handling and the ticket sales and all that stuff and security, for example, all these individuals depend on this paycheck as well. And just throwing it out the window and trying to say, oh, only executives are going to lose is very misleading and irresponsible. So anyways, that's my take on the article, um, bailout versus non-bailout. I'm not going to get too much into it, but essentially you should be able to find free market financial institutions um, to help fund businesses that might need some capital to get through tough times. Um, but that being said, I don't think we should be doing government fundings where we try to pick and choose corporations and individuals and bail people out. So anyways, that's my take. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.